Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Cassandra. I'm gonna take you through this slow flow, deep stretch practice. I would say this is best suitable for intermediate students. If you're a beginner, don't um, hesitate to try this class out. You might just be going a little less deep into some poses. I'm not using any props, but as with all stretchy classes, if you have some, you might wanna have them close by just in case you'd rather modify a pose and use them. So let's begin sitting up in a way that is comfortable in Sukhasana, easy pose, cross-legged. Relax and feel your pelvis really anchor and ground as you lengthen and lift out of your lower back. So creating that space through the sides of the waist, shrug your shoulders down and away from your ears, chin parallel to the floor and close your eyes. I'm just beginning by doing a little scan starting from the crown of your head, work your way down. Noticing what you feel in your body. Where there might be tension or stiffness or just some other sensation that requires your attention today. Noticing through your neck and your shoulders, going down your arms, down your spine, through your belly, all the way into your hips, your legs, down into your feet. And you can keep your eyes closed if you'd like. We're just gonna trace some half circles with our head to start to stretch into our neck. So you can drop one ear to one shoulder, stretching out to one side, and then just dip your chin down towards the middle of your chest. Circle it back up halfway. And just making those half circles here. Try to keep breathing in and out through your nose as you move. So we'll be moving slowly today as a way to really connect and feel what's going on. And also as a way to stay a little longer in each pose. So we can really relax into it and increase flexibility. It's also wonderful for stress. Take one more half circle. And you can lift your head back up and through to center. Garudasana, eagle arms. Bend your elbows out in front of you at a 90 degree angle. You can wrap once or twice, shrug your shoulders down. Move your hands away from your face and keep your elbows up. And you can tuck your chin to your chest if you'd like here. Really push your forms into each other. Push your palms into each other. And go ahead and release. Stretch your right arm up and take a little side body stretch before we go and do that same thing to the other side. Really lengthen it out. Come all the way back up and we'll take eagle arms on the other side. So this time left arm under the right, binding once or twice, elbows up, shoulders down, hands moving away from you. Tuck your chin down. Feel your shoulder blades expand as you inhale, stretching through the upper back. And go ahead and release, left arm up, big side body stretch. Still push down into that left sit bone so you're not lifting your hips off the floor. And coming all the way up, let's just stretch our right leg out to the side. Keep your left foot to the inside of your thigh. Walk your hands on over and take that first stretch into our hamstrings, bringing head towards your knee. And you can do this practice at any time of the day. It happens to be morning for me. This is my first practice of the day. 
And if it's your first practice as well, you might notice that the muscles are kind of tight. You're not going as far as you would like to. Just try to breathe into it. And we're going to do five dynamic movements from here. So as you inhale, you're going to bring your left hand back behind you. Baby wild thing. Right arm stretches up and over. Big breath in here. And as you exhale, set your hips down and fold forward. And each time you might be able to go a little bit deeper. Inhale, peel it back. Little back bend, side body stretch. Exhale. Fold it down. Three more and go at your own pace. Maybe moving into your last one. And we'll lift on up and right away going to the other side. So bring that right foot in, left leg moves out. And we'll start with our forward fold first. So just bringing head to knee, try to lift and stretch out of your lower back. You're still anchoring your pelvis to the floor. It's super normal if this side feels tighter than the other or maybe it feels more open. And peel it back into your baby wild thing. Right hand back behind you. Left arm swings up and back. Big side body stretch here. Exhale, fold in towards your left knee. Four more at your own pace with your breath. Inhale, baby wild thing. Exhale, head to knee. Getting a little lower each time and those hips a little higher. Take your last one here. Inhale, lift. And exhale to fold. Coming all the way up through to center. Let's find tabletop pose onto our hands and knees. Palms under your shoulders, knees under your hips, just cat and cow moving in and out here. Inhale, drop your belly, lift your gaze, tailbone up. Push the mat away from you. Exhale, round and contract. And keep going here. Last one, exhale. Coming back through to neutral, let's find our downward dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Walk your hands a little bit forward. Lift your hips up and back. And let's all bend our left knee generously. Focus on your right leg as you push down into your right heel. Keep trying to curl your tailbone up towards the sky and push your chest towards your thighs. So really stretching into your right ankle, your right calf muscle, up into the back of your knee. Push into your fingertips to take the weight out of your wrists. And switch sides, bend your right knee generously, push down into your left heel. Find your neutral downward dog. So you might be bending both knees a little bit here. We're gonna stretch the right leg up towards the sky. Bend your knee, open up your hip. And if you'd like, you can come up onto your right fingertips and look underneath your right shoulder for a deeper side bend. Side body stretch, squeeze and lift up even higher. Into your low lunge or a variation of a low lunge. You're gonna bring that right foot forward. Bring that left knee down and keep your fingertips to the floor as you roll your shoulders back and lift up through your gaze. 
And once more, some dynamic movement will move in and out of two poses. So as you inhale, you'll find this low lunge variation. And as you exhale, you're gonna push into your heel to fold, half splits. Inhale, shift your hips forward, let them sink down. Exhale, fold. Three more here. Last one. And with your back toes curled under, see if you can lift the back knee off the mat. Keep flexing your front right foot so you're lifting and curling your toes back as you fold on in. Just a different way of working this type of pose. Try to melt your shoulders, release any tension, and you can flatten your right foot to the floor now. Now you might want to bring your back foot in a couple inches so that you can ground that heel to the mat. Make sure all four corners of both feet are flat to the floor and you can come up onto your left fingertips. Maybe just work at bringing your right hand to your hip. You might want to stay here if you'd like. You can come into revolve triangle, reaching your right arm up to the sky. You can absolutely keep a bend in your front knee if you'd like. We're not here for too long, just opening up. And you can circle that palm down, fold it in, and just step back, downward facing dog. Notice if there's a little bit more space in your legs this time. And we're gonna bring our knees to the floor, walk your hands forward, take your puppy pose stretch. Try to relax your arms in this one. And instead of letting our belly drop down to the ground, think of drawing your lower belly in so there's not as much of an arch in your lower back. Instead, you're trying to really melt through the mid and upper back. And come forward into your sphinx pose, shifting onto your belly. And we're just going to add a quad stretch here. So keep the heart lifted. You can bring your left hand in a diagonal to help with balance. Bend into your right knee and reach it back to pull it in. You really need to push your pubic bone into the floor for this one so that you're not pinching into your low back. We're really just trying to isolate the quads with a little bit of a back bend. And release, switch sides. Try to lift out of your shoulder. Release from here, press back, downward facing dog, lifting your hips up and back. Let's find this sequence on the second side. You're gonna stretch your left leg up, bend your left knee, open up your hip, and maybe come up, up onto your left fingertips, looking underneath your left shoulder for a bigger side body stretch. Really lift that knee up as high as it can go. And we'll step our foot through in between our palms to the top of the mat. Make sure your knee is over your ankle and stay up high onto your fingertips here. Opening through your chest. Getting that first big stretch into our hip flexors. And you can push into your left heel in order to just send your hips back and keep that foot flexed here. We're really working on ankle and calf mobility, stretching into that area. As you inhale, you'll find that low lunge. And as you exhale, you'll shift your hips back. Take three more here. Hmm. 
And getting a little deeper into it each time. And keep your front foot flexed the next time you're in this half splits pose. You can tuck your back toes under to lift the back knee off the floor as you fold. See if you can pull that right hip forward. And you can let your left foot be flat to the floor. And bring your back right foot in a couple inches so that all four corners of both feet are firmly anchored to the mat. Right hand is roughly underneath my right shoulder. I'm bringing my left hand to my hip. You might just want to work from here. There's already a ton going on. Otherwise, add a twist for your revolved triangle, reaching your left arm up to the sky. Only looking up if it's okay for your neck. You can absolutely bend into your front knee. I know this pose is a lot. This is one of the poses I actually avoid doing the most because it feels really awkward in my body, but I know it's good for me. And release just so you can fold forward and step it back to your downward dog. Instead of coming back into our puppy pose and into that sphinx variation with our quad stretch, we're gonna take an extended child's pose Big toes together, knees as wide apart as is comfortable. Get a big stretch through the inner thighs and inner groin, fold on down. Five deep breaths here. One more big breath and come back into your Sphinx pose. We'll just do eight different variation this time. You're welcome to just hang out in Sphinx if this is enough. If you'd like a deeper back bend, you can lift up into seal. So lifting your elbows off the mat. Again, really pay attention to your lower back. We're trying to emphasize our mid and upper back broadening and expanding. If there's pain near your tailbone, near your low back, please lower out of it. Big breath in here. And let's release, press it back with control, downward facing dog, lifting your hips up and back. Let's stretch our right leg up again, bend your knee, open your hip. And we'll come to Virabhadrasana 2, our warrior 2. So step that foot through, bring your back foot parallel to the shorter edge of your mat, open up through your arms. And right away, coming into extended side angle, maybe you place your hand or your elbow to your knee, or you can bring your right hand down to the floor. Either way, we're all bringing our left bicep along the ear, making a big diagonal line from the left fingertips all the way to your left foot. Think of rolling your left shoulder back, spinning your heart up towards the sky and really pushing into that back heel. You might wanna stay here or you can add a bind, bringing your left hand to your lower back, maybe reaching underneath and clasping the hands. If this makes your chest dip down to the floor, you've gone too far. Two more breaths right here. And now look down at the mat. Just release your hands to the floor. Lift your back heel off the ground and widen your stance with your right foot. You can rock a little bit back and forth. So I have both my arms to the inside of my right leg. My knee is on top of my ankle. And let's get deeper into this one. Let your back knee come down to the floor. You can curl the right toes up, 
roll to the outer edge of your foot and lower down onto your forearms holding here five breaths Try to relax any tension from your shoulders. And now lift yourself up just a little bit so you can lean on your left elbow. We're gonna add a quad stretch. Reach your right hand back, bend into your left knee and pull your heel in. And there's a little bit of a leaning here that happens. Your right shoulder is pulling back. One more full big breath. Very carefully release the hold of that back leg. We step back into our downward dog. I'm not doing any vinyasas in this practice. Usually I like to leave those out for slower flows, not focusing on strength as much. And of course, you're always welcome to do one if you prefer. Otherwise, we'll set ourselves up for the other side. Left leg up, bend your knee, open your hip, and we'll step it through warrior two. Left foot between your palms, back foot spins down, push into your feet to lift, and really keep that left thigh pressing open as we move to our extended side angle. Maybe you're just bringing your left forearm to your thigh, or you can bring the fingertips down to the floor and use your elbow to push that knee open a little wider as you stretch that top arm up. Big, long stretch from the right fingertips all the way to your right foot. Keep pushing into that back heel and maybe add a bind if you'd like. Keep rolling that right shoulder back, pushing into both feet. One more breath here and look down, release the arms, lift your back heel off the mat, toe heel your foot a little wider and just rock a little back and forth, letting gravity pull your hips down a little bit lower. And you can rest your right knee down to the mat, curl the left toes up, open the foot, so roll it out to the side. You want your ankle, your knee, and your hip to all be rotating out. And then you might choose to come down onto your forearms. Slower, deeper breaths in and out through your nose. And you can add your quad stretch, lift up a little, leaning on your right forearm. Bend into your right knee and reach back with your left hand to pull that foot in. Leaning back a little with your left shoulder. Carefully release the hold of that foot, stepping it back, downward facing dog. Press into your heels, see if you can reach and stretch a little more. And we can walk our feet forward to the top of the mat for your ragdoll fold. Your hands can stay on the mat or you can hold on to your elbows and add a little swaying. We're 
Release your hands down, bend your knees generously and push your heels into the floor in order to lift on up and we'll open the legs wide. Toes turning in here, coming into our wide legged folds. Lift and lengthen through your spine and maintain this length even as you hinge forward from your pelvis to fold on down. Any arm variation that you'd like here, I'm just gonna hold on to my big toes with my two-piece fingers, bending the elbows away from one another. Decompressing along the spine. Imagine you can create a little bit more space between each vertebrae. And we'll stay in this fold, but just release the hold of your toes if that's what you were doing. And walk your hands over to the right. Maybe hold on to your right leg or your right foot as you bring your head towards your knee. Stretching along deeper at the back of our right hamstrings. Keep spinning towards the back of your mat. So we're gonna do pigeon pose. Most likely at home, you'll be doing pigeon pose facing the back of your mat. Just turn towards the right. And now you can bring your right knee behind your right wrist, stretching out that left leg back behind you, squaring off the hips and the pelvis. So because we've done quite a few quad stretches and worked on shoulders a little bit here, if you'd like, you can add your quad stretch here coming into mermaid pose which is just bending into that knee and you might be able to wiggle the foot in kind of have to readjust here so the foot goes into the crease of the elbow and you can reach back with your right hand either looking up or looking back if it's too much let it go And we'll carefully release the hold of that foot, all coming down into our pigeon pose. Square off the pelvis, notice if they've shifted a little bit. And fold on down. Five breaths here. Try to let your upper body relax completely. One more big belly breath. And you can lift on up. Come into downward dog. You'll be facing the back of your mat. That's fine. We're just going to come back to stand and we're going to repeat that same wide legged forward fold. So from your downward dog, you can find ragdoll at the back of your mat to walk your feet forward and just bend your knees generously, push into your heels, roll all the way up to stand. Step your feet wide once more. Toes in, hands to your hips. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, hinge forward and release. Again, any arm variation that you would like here. The tendency is for the shoulders to collapse towards our ears because gravity is kind of pulling them down. We need to actively work against that by shrugging the shoulders back and this will allow for more decompression at the back of our neck. Even soften through your jaw, through your facial muscles. Walk your hands towards your left foot and left leg. Grab a hold of whatever you can as you bring your head towards your knee.
And since we're already facing in this direction, keep spinning towards the top of the mat. So pointing those left toes forward, lifting the back heel off the mat, coming into your pigeon pose. So you're gonna let your left knee align itself behind your left wrist, square off the pelvis as you stretch that back leg behind you. And you might just stay right here, working on your back bend from this pose, or you might add your little mermaid stretch by bending the right knee, reaching back with your right arm and seeing if you can place those toes kind of in that elbow crease. And you can reach back and clasp your hands. It is really hard not to roll only on our left hip. We have to kind of remind our right hip to ground down. And you can very carefully release the hold of that back foot. We'll fold forward into our full pigeon pose. You might need to readjust yourself a little bit here. Folding on down five very slow, steady breaths. We can start to ease on out. This will be our final downward facing dog, stepping it back. Make any little adjustments here that feel good to you. Really stretch out through the backs of your legs, through your arms, into your spine. And we'll come into our Malasana Yogi Squat at the center of the mat. So walk your feet forward and widen your stance. Heels in, toes out, bend your knees as you drop on down hands at your heart and we're really emphasizing a lengthening of our spine here as we open the knees i find this pose to feel really good after i've done some back bends like that mermaid pose it's also a very grounding posture to be in letting our hips settle And set your hips to the floor. Let's find Bhattakanasana, our butterfly fold, really slowing things down even more here. As we start to close our practice, you can hold on maybe onto the big toes if you'd like, lengthening through your spine and then folding forward, hinging at the hips as you soften on down. Try to relax your head, relax your neck. Let gravity pull you deeper into the pose. Three more breaths here. You can come on up, walk your hands in. And we're gonna lower down onto our backs. And we'll set ourselves up for a shoulder stand. If this is too much for you, you're welcome to leave it out. So you can lift your hips up and support your lower back with your hands, rolling your shoulder blades underneath you here and straightening your legs up towards the sky. And we're trying to align ourselves as much as possible over the shoulders. This is another pose that I find to be so challenging. That's a great inversion.
You can go into plow pose if you'd like. And to come out of this one, try to support your hips. Go really slowly. I don't want your head and your neck to slingshot off the mat. So ease on down. And once your hips are there, you can hug your knees and rock a little side to side. <sighs> and we'll release all of this with a laying spinal twist. I'm gonna take eagle legs, Garudasana legs, wrapping right thigh over the left, arms reach to the side, let both knees drop to the left, and maybe look over your right shoulder. Let's switch sides, carefully lifting the legs back up, wrapping the opposite way, left thigh over the right, drop your knees over to the right and maybe look over your left shoulder. Come back through to center into Shavasana, our final resting pose. Take up some space. Let yourself be fully heavy here. And doing that same full body scan that we did at the beginning of class. Relax your muscles along the way from the crown of your head into your neck your shoulders, relaxing your arms down into your hands and your fingers, softening along your spine to your chest and your abdomen, hips heavy, relaxing any tension from your thighs, your calves, and finally your feet. Full body relaxation here. Our final few minutes together. Breathe a little deeper, start to wake back up, stretching it all out. And you can roll to one side, we'll come up, ending our practice the same way we started it. Hands in prayer, Anjali Mudra. Closing your eyes, taking a moment of gratitude for yourself your practice closing with the chant of om inhale to chant big breath in om. 
Thank you so much for doing this practice with me. I would love to know how this one went for you. And if you would like to see more slow flow, deep stretches here on my channel, please do leave me a comment below to let me know. And you can always follow this up with a short meditation if you'd like to stay a little longer on your yoga mat. Please do subscribe and hopefully you'll practice again with me tomorrow.